flow, how you can take advantage of expression and blend uh, to really kind of build uh, tremendously uh, rich serverlet applications uh, that take full advantage of the platform. So right. thanks, Joe. Thanks, Bob. So let's uh, dive right into the demo. You can see here that I'm inside Expression Blend 3. And down at the bottom here, here's my sketch by Matt. What we actually use this for is designing the UI flow of the application. So let's in this case imagine we're building an online banking application where we want to allow people to see their accounts and various information like that. Well, I probably need to obviously have a log on screen to actually allow people to log on. That's always a, a good idea. So we'll just rename that screen like so. Once the user's logged in, well, I probably want them to go straight to their account screen. So I can just drag up the next screen there and we'll just rename that to accounts. From their account screen, we'll probably want to give them two or three different options. Maybe a screen to check their transactions, their spending trends, and maybe also their investments as well. So very rapidly, I can start to draw out the flow of the application without actually going into any detail at this stage. The great thing about this application flow is that it's actually a real application right now. So I can build it and I can run it and I can actually step through that application flow before I've invested too much time. So you can almost think of these screens as little blank canvases just waiting to have some additional content and detail added to them. So let's see how Sketchflow helps me do that. Up my asset panel, Sketchflow actually provides me with a whole series of sketch style components to really help convey the, the prototype nature of the application. So let's just choose a simple one here. Let's just uh, grab a button and draw out a couple of buttons. And immediately you can see they look very low fidelity, almost as if I've taken out my 2D pencil and literally drawn them on the screen. This really helps the client understand that this is not production ready. You know, this is a prototype. We're not going to put this into production tomorrow. All of these controls have exactly the same look and feel, and the client really starts to understand where we are in the process at this stage. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut to a different version of this project. I've just moved along a bit to, to keep the pace up. You can see I've got the same screen layout down here. I've got a log on screen. I'll just use some sticky notes to really define and allow the client to understand what will be on the screen a little bit later. Much like you'd use sticky notes on a whiteboard, we can use them here within Sketchflow. On the account screen, we started to add some extra content here. We've got this tab UI that we'll look at in a minute. We've got some navigation at the top and some additional context there for the client so they can understand what this screen's for. On the transaction screen, we've got a back button, a search area, and a list box. Well, the thing about list boxes is they don't really come to life until they've got data inside them. So let's just see how easy it is to actually create some sample data and actually use that right within Sketchflow. So all I need to do is come to my data panel say I want some new data and hit OK and literally one second later I've got some sample data right within Sketchflow. It's got a couple of properties by default, I can very easily add some more. I can also very easily edit the type of data we're dealing with. So in this case we've got some raw and Ipsum text. That's not really what I want. So let's have some email addresses. I just choose that from my list and now we'll generate email addresses. Of course it couldn't be simpler to use this. I pick it up, I drag it, I drop it and my list box just jumps into life with that sample data. Now what you might not have realized is these controls, they look sketchy in style and nature, but they're actually real controls. That's a real Silverlight list box. And just to, to prove that, we're just going to come into the property uh, panel here. I'm just going to reset that list box and get rid of the sketch by look and feel. And you can see it gets rid of the sketchy font, gets rid of the sketchy style, and it's just a standard sort of like component. So even though we're building a prototype, you're using that actual platform uh, uh, components and elements here. So if that's a real list box, the good news is that must be a real button. So if that's a real button, we can actually make it do something. And in this case, when we click on that button, I'm going to make it navigate back from the transaction screen back to the account screen. And the way that we do that is I literally just right click on the button and say navigate to and choose the screen I actually want to navigate to. And that's it, we're done. So I'm just going to test this now. We're going to just have a look at this. And we'll look at this in exactly the same way the client would, would, would actually review it. Uh, inside the Sketchflow player. What the Sketchflow player is, it's actually built as part of the prototype. It's freely distributable. That means your client does not need to have Expression Blend or Expression Studio or any of the expression tools installed actually review the prototype. In fact, all they need is this. They simply need a browser, 
with Silverlight installed, and then they can interact with the prototype. So imagine I'm the client for the second. I've got my prototype running inside the browser here. You can see we're on the, the, the login screen. I haven't actually got any UI built on this screen yet, so it'd be quite difficult to navigate the prototype. But Sketch, the Sketchfab player actually provides me with that navigation. It tells me I'm on the login screen at the moment. It also tells me that from that screen, I can get to one other screen, the account screen. So when I click on that, I navigate straight through there. There's the tab UI. I can start to interact with that. And these buttons are also live as well. Now, if we presented this to the client as a high fidelity prototype with rich graphics and rich color, the client would start concentrating on the wrong things at this stage. They'd start to ask, you know, can we use a different font? Can it be a bit smaller? Can we change the color? Can that logo be three pixels to the left or to the right? Concentrating on the wrong things. By keeping it low fidelity, we're allowing the client to concentrate on the thing that matters. Have we got the right functionality on this screen? If we haven't, let's fix it. Because it's very cheap to fix it now in this early stage of the prototype. So let's look at some of the other screens. The transaction screen. Well, here's that sample data we created a few moments ago. Remember we said this was a, a real list box? It's a real list box, so we can interact with this list box. We can select the data. We can interact with the individual data components there very, very easily. And obviously the back button, when I click on the back button, that will just navigate you back to that previous screen. And actually the way we built that navigation, that simple movement from one screen to the other, we use another great new feature in Expression Blend 3 called Behaviors. And behaviors allows you to add this kind of interactivity without writing code, which is exactly what we've just seen. The trend screen, we started to try and bring the prototype to life a bit, adding some interactivity and uh, some animation here to really allow the client to understand how this could work. So the UI just bounces in really nicely there, really fluidly. So we can add all those sorts of effects. As we click on the different options here, we can really start to demonstrate to the client the sort of information that can be presented up there. And this is one of the really powerful things about Sketchflow. You can actually keep your prototype as conceptual or make it as real as a particular client or project demands. It's you're in control, so you can make that decision and, and actually do that. So let's uh, just come back into, into Blend. And what I actually want to do now is present my client with the project documentation. And if, if you've been like me and you've worked in the studio before, you know at the start of a project, you spend a lot of your time producing documents for the client. And that's the worst time to be, to, uh, be uh, building those documents because things are changing so rapidly. So what we're going to see now is Sketchflow will actually have built the document for me. I'll have a table of contents, just opening up Word right now. So here, here's the document. We've got a table of contents. We've got all of the individual elements that were used within, within that particular prototype. We've also got screenshots of everything as well. So there's the Sketchflow map. Here's a screenshot of each individual screen. But not only that, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, down to the trend screen, remember this screen had got lots of different states, animation, lots of things going on. Well, the Sketchflow document has also picked those up as well and put all the different states of that screen into this document. So very quickly, I've been able to build a skeleton document that I can then hand off to the client. So very, very flexible.